In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can use the toolpath tiling options when working with a design that is larger than our machine's working area, or to help us in a situation where the material we have available is smaller than the design. Let's get started by closing off this design and opening up a new file. We're going to open an existing file, and for this tutorial it will be the Large Howling Wolf 2.5D toolpaths file. So now that we have the project open, if you have a look in the bottom left corner here, you can see the job dimensions. We've got a width of 72 inches and a height of 48 inches. This project size is going to be much larger than the average CNC machine that most people will be using. And as such, a design like this would be impossible to carve out in a single piece on those machines. This is where the feature for toolpath tiling comes in, which will allow us to cut this into smaller sections on our machines to then put back together piece by piece to create a final design. So let's switch over to the double view and then we can switch over to the toolpath tab using the switch to toolpath command here in the top left corner. And here you can see my list of toolpaths for this project. So let's go into preview and I'll just run a preview on all toolpaths to show you what this design looks like in the 3D view. As you can see, it's made up of a series of pockets, which are then followed up by a profile toolpath using a V-bit to give the text a beveled edge, and then a profile toolpath to cut around the outside to give us the final piece. And from here, I can double click on the waste material piece here, and this removes it so you can see it in its full glory. As this is a project which is going to be much larger than the hypothetical 24 inch by 24 inch machine that I have, I wouldn't be able to cut this out normally on our machine. So what we need to do is close out the preview toolpaths and open up our tiling option, which is the icon you see here for tile toolpaths. When you click on this, it will bring up the toolpath tiling manager. This will allow you to choose the size of your tiles that you want your design to be created in. And to activate it, you just need to turn on the Tile Toolpaths tick box here. And then you have all the options to edit the size of your tiles to suit the machine that you're going to be using. So let's go over the different options you see here in the Toolpath Tiling Manager. First of all, you want to make sure that you have the Tile Toolpath option turned on to begin with. And then you've got the three main options here, which is the individual tiles, feed through in X and feed through in Y. The individual tiles is mainly for when you want to have a large project which overlaps your machine in both X and Y. And the raw material that you'll be using on your machine is going to be smaller sections of the larger whole. Feed through in X and feed through in Y both work in the same way in that they allow you to create longer projects than your machine can support but only if your project's other axis is no larger than the machine's axis of that same side. So for example, if I was feeding through in X, the Y dimension of my project would be no larger than the material and the machine's Y axis. And that way my machine would also be set up in such a way that I would be able to feed a plank of material along the X axis, unobstructed by any of the machine's physical hardware. Likewise, this is the same in Y that my machine would have to be able to slide a plank of wood along the Y axis without being obstructed by anything for this to be suitable. If, for example, I wanted to make a wide banner, but my machine was set up in such a way that I had to feed it through Y instead, I would have to make my wide banner at a 90 degree angle on my project to have it suit my machine. Let's go back to the individual tiles though, as that's what is most appropriate in this project that I'm going to be demonstrating here today. So let's have a look at the tile setup that we have currently. Right now, as you can see in the 2D view, we have a small T1 here in the center to signify that this is tile one currently. And right now my tile width is set to 72 inches wide and 48 inches high which is the same size as my material. So in effect, we have a single tile. We can then adjust these tile widths and values. So in my case, I shall set this to 24 and 24 for both of them to match my 24 inch machine. And then I can just click update tiles. And you can see now in the 2D view, it is now split up 
the different sections into different tiles, so you can see which tile will be created in which order. If I now make my toolpaths visible by making sure they are all ticked in the toolpath list here, you can see here in the 2D view, they are now all visible as normal. However, in the 3D view, you can see that they are now being highlighted separately so that you can only see tile one's toolpaths. This is because the toolpath drawing active tile is set to tile one. And you can change this to see each tile and how its toolpaths would look. At the moment, we've got the option to draw the toolpaths in their original position to help with some visualization. This is just so to help you to visualize what they look like in relation to the overall project. If I was now to turn this off, you see they've now jumped back down to uh, be closer to the X0, Y0. This is because on the actual machine, on the actual toolpath, when you go to cut these, this is their position in relation to the machine's origin, which is this point that's highlighted here. So really we have a small 24 inch square piece of material, and then these are the toolpaths that we'll be cutting out of that material. It does help to have them visualized in their original location though, just to show you where they are for, compared to everything else. But you want to make sure to check both the original position and turn this off to see the actual position relative to the X0, Y0 on your machine bed. This option is only for visualization and doesn't affect the actual toolpaths that are going to be output by the software. One other option you have with the toolpath preview is if you turn off the option here and then we go back into the toolpath preview, we can then reset the preview. And as you can see, we're now seeing a 24 inch square block, which is going to be our preview material. Now, when I preview all the toolpaths, you can see I'm only previewing tile four. You can also switch tiles by double clicking on the tile indicator, which is the T number in the middle of the tile you see there. So let's say I cl double click on T2, and you can see now it's highlighted T2 in red. And when I reset the preview and preview all toolpaths again, you can now see that this is clearly going to be tile two's toolpaths here. And this brings me to the last point I want to bring up, which is the tile overlap. Now, if I zoom in on the material here, you can see that the VBIT tool is going to be reaching the very edge there, but is not going to continue on where it would normally continue, leaving that very edge bit uncut, because it's going to stop at the very edge of the tile, and that's it. So in some cases, you will want to have a bit of a tile overlap which causes all the toolpaths to continue on a little bit of an extra distance over the edge of the material. It only has to be small and is usually the radius of the largest tool that you're going to be using. So in my case, I'm going to set this to 0.25 inches. If I update my tiles and then select T2 to select the second tile again, and then preview all my toolpaths, you'll see that the V-bit here has completed what would have been its full cut here, rather than aborting right at the very edge of the material. And if I just turn on the preview for that, you can see it's now overshooting by that quarter of an inch distance. So that, that way we can be sure that each one of our tiles is going to have a clean cut at the edge of each of its sides, so that they can then marry up to the adjacent tile cleanly. So let's turn back on the visualization and leave the toolpath preview. We're going to go into the saving toolpaths panel. And here you can see we are now set up ready to start saving out our toolpaths. I'm going to make all of my toolpaths visible and have the visible toolpaths to multiple files turned on, group where possible turned on. And because this is a tiled toolpath, it's going to output with the tiled toolpath option turned on. This is turned on by default when you have a toolpath tiling manager set up for your project. And as you can see, it's currently saying that I'm going to be saving these toolpaths and it's going to list each one of the toolpaths I'm going to save. I then want to make sure that the machine and the post processor is correct for my machine. And if you want to learn more about this, please watch the tutorial saving guide. And then I can just click on save toolpaths. 
it'll bring up a Windows folder to allow me to choose where I'm going to save. In this case, I'm going to save into my Vetrix tutorial folder. And then I just need to give this a project name. In this case, it'll be tiled toolpaths. And then I can just click save. And now that the software's had a moment to think, the Windows folder which I have selected is now full of toolpath files. And as you can see here, we have each one of these toolpaths has been prefixed by a T value. So in this case, each one of these T1 files are the toolpaths for the first tile. Likewise, we then have tile two toolpaths with T2, tile three toolpaths with T3, and so on, all the way up to tile six. And you would use these by running through each set of tiled toolpaths, cutting out each set on its own individual piece of material until you've completed all six tiles, which you can then physically join back together again to complete your project. I'm just going to select all of these toolpaths and delete them for the moment and move the folder out of the way. In some cases, when you have a number of pockets, which are all using the same tool for the clearance part, and then a separate tool for the main tool of the pocket toolpath, you can optimize some of this a little bit by adjusting the toolpath order in your toolpath list. So you can see here, I have grouped together each of the clearance tools and then each of the normal pocket toolpaths. Now, when I save these toolpaths, I can then choose to name the files again. In this case, I'll just call these tiled toolpaths again. Click save. And then my toolpath files are created again. And as you can see here, our first toolpath now has got the clearance pockets one to three all combined within a single toolpath file. And I have less toolpath files overall to run on the machine as they are now a bit more optimized than they were before. As long as I run each toolpath in order and apply the correct tool though, this will allow you to create your carvings very efficiently and easily. And that will mark the end of this toolpath tiling tutorial, where we have covered how to use the toolpath tiling manager to set up individual tiles to cut out a large design on a small desktop machine. We then showed how to preview each one of those tiles individually, and then how to save those toolpaths out in a set of files, which we can then cut on our machine in order to create the final project. Thank you for watching this video.